have pictogram question. So it's the November 2010 paper again, and it's question two. And you notice this little star, which means that somewhere in the question, they're going to tell you, or they're going to ask you to write something down, and you're going to earn marks for the way you explain yourself in using the words, uh, using words. So we've got to be aware of that. You've got to notice that, so don't get freaked out by that. Right, let's look. Here we go. So Nick takes four tests. The pictogram shows his scores. He scores 60% in English. So this row must be 60%. Well, to get to 60% in three steps means that um, one circle must be 20%. And in which subject is his highest score? Well, let's just have a quick look. It's obvious from the, from the diagram. You can see that it's 20, 40. He scored 50% in geography. In maths he scored 20, 40, 60, 80, 90 percent. He did really well in maths, hopefully like you're going to do in your exam. And he scored 20, 40 percent in science. So clearly when we put those down just it helps us out. In, it's kind of obvious really. In which subject is his highest high score? It's this one. You've just got to remember you've got to count that half up. So it's 90 percent. Uh, no it's not. His best his highest score was 90%, but in which subject? It was mathematics. Okay. Right. Let's have a look at the next page. Next page says, well, it gives you some information first. I've just had to shrink it down so it fits on the page. So it says that Jen takes the same four tests and her uh, results are labelled here. So she got 90% in English, she got 70% in Geography, oops, 70% in Geography, she scored, well that bar's exactly halfway between 40 and 50, it's in between, well each square going up must be two, four, six, it must be two, must be each square, that's in between two squares, so it must be 45%, and in Science, she scored 80. Now that compares with Nick's scores, in English, he scored 60% in English, he scored 50% in Geography, Maths, he scored 90%, he did much better, and in Science, he did 40%, so he did much worse. And what we need to do is, is Nick wants to compare his scores with Gen scores, draw a suitable diagram he could use. Well, if there's a bar chart here, we could use that, but we need to put uh, Nick scores on, on it as well. So what we can draw is what we call a dual bar chart. We can draw a dual bar chart. That means we're going to draw a bar chart of Nick and Jen next to each other. So we're going to have like the English results, geography results, maths results, science results, but we're going to have two bars. One's going to be for uh, Nick and one's going to be for Jen. So we're going to look at our scale here. So let's make it very similar. Let's use this one to help us. Let's make a scale up the side of naught. Big square is 10, uh, 20, 30, 40, do exactly the same as they've done, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. And this axis, we need to label the axis as well. It's a score and it's a percentage, that's the test score. Along the bottom, we're going to have subject. And if I just put a little marker for two squares, if we make this English, leave a gap, let's make this math. I'm doing two squares because I'm going to do two bars next to each other. Let's make this math, leave a square. Two squares. Oh, let's not make that one math. Let's keep it in the same order, otherwise we're going to get ourselves confused. Let's make that second one geography. Geography. This one is maths. And the last one is leave a square. And do a double, which is science. Now, it's really important. You're going to lose marks if you don't label up your axes properly. So you have to have the numbers and the label, and you have to have it called it subject and have the subjects on the bottom. Now, uh, 
I might do it in different color. I would, would do it in different colors, but actually I'm going to do it in different shading um, because in the exam you're probably going to be doing everything in, in pen or pencil and it's going to look the same when it's scanned in. So let's do uh, Jen scores first. Let's put Jen's bar on. So if we draw, we need to go up to 90% for English. So let's draw the vertical lines all the way up to 90%. And then let's draw across. So English was 90%. Her geography went up to 70%. So let's get that right. Up to 70%. And we have to be really accurate. So make sure your pencil's sharp here. Make sure that you're exactly on the lines and you're being really neat. Make your bars have to be the same width. In maths, she went. She only scored forty-five percent. This one's a little bit tricky, so we've got to go forty, forty-two, forty-four, and it's exactly like hers. We got to halfway between forty-four and forty-six, and it's going to be really obvious you've gone exactly halfway. So that's forty-five. And in science, she scored 80. So let's go all the way up to 80, which is here. And then across. And then straight back down. There. So we've now got our Jen's scores on there. What we need to do now is we need to add a Nick's score. So I'll copy them from the previous page. You could just look back at the uh, numbers that we already collected together for Nick. So you're going to have to turn your page in the exam and flip back and forwards. So Nick only scored 60. So we're going to go up in the bar right next to it. And we're going to go across exactly at 60. And he scored 50 for geography. So next to geography, I need to go up and then directly across. And for math, he did really well. He scored 90, didn't he, for maths. So we've got to go all the way up to 90 and come down. And this is all done with a ruler, remember? It's really important. Keep it nice and neat. And then the last one for science, he only scored 40. He didn't do as well. It's Jen, so up to 40 and then straight across. It's a little bit low. Let's bring this one up a bit. And the uh, Maths of 45, I just want to make it really obvious that it's halfway. Okay. So that's that's fine. So we've got the dual bar chart. But the problem is, we need to somehow show that Jen's results are the left-hand bars and Nick's results are the right-hand bars. So you could write Jen and Nick above each one, but that looks that's going to start to look a little bit neat, so um, messy. So what we might do is we could just indicate so just by slightly shading in, in fact, better than shading in, would be just kind of putting some kind of stripe or, or something, or gentle shading, or you could colour it in, and the bars could be different colours. Just something that obviously means, makes it obvious that, that one belongs to one person, and one belongs to another person. So I'm just doing this to all the left-hand bars, which these are Gen scores. And then just somewhere on the side, I need to make it obvious, or even on the, just the corner of the diagram, I can do it just up here. Uh, I could just have a little square and a little square here, just drawn like that. And if I put shading in one square, we know that square belongs to Jen, and we know that Nick Nick belongs to a blank. So we've made it really obvious, and it's really clear to see that the left-hand diagram is, is the left-hand bar is Jen's, and the right-hand bar is Nick's. Okay, so there's four marks available for that. Now it's two marks for getting all the bars at the right height. You get one mark for getting your scales right and one mark for indicating that the one the one set of bars belongs to Jen and one set of bars belongs to Nick. Okay. We're almost finished. I'm gonna to have to flip over a page and look back at this. Let's just get rid of that. Now we're asked to write down three facts comparing their scores. So we're gonna write down three bits of it different and they've got to be different. 
three different bits of information. So let's have a look at this. Um, well, if we just look at Jen's results, if we just look at the blue bars, we can see that English was her best score. So, um, uh, well, actually, we, we did see that. She did, but if we compare that, so Jen did better than Nick in English, in geography, and in science. So, let's write that down. So her bars were higher. So, Jen did better in, she did better in English, she did better in geography, she did much worse in maths, um, but she also did better in science. So that's one statement we've noticed from our bar chart. She did better in English, geography, and science. So let's go back and look at that. The bars were higher in those three subjects. Um, we could spot, if we look at math, we've not mentioned maths yet, so let's think I mentioned something about maths. So Nick did um, much better in maths than Jen. In fact, she got 45 and he got 90. So we could write something like Nick uh, got twice uh, the score Jen did in maths. So you know how to have said different point, okay? So Jen did better in those two subjects, Nick did better in maths, but he did twice, exactly twice. So I've been quite specific about what she did, about what he did. Now the final one, let's have a look. Let's look at the best subject thing, is what I said first. So Jen's best subject was English and maths was Nick's best subject. So uh, let's just, Jen's best subject, let's write down that. that. Jen's, just, Jen's best subject was English and Nick's best subject. was maths. So I've set down three different pieces of information. I've looked at the bar chart. I've compared uh, Nick, and, uh, Nick and Jen. I looked at uh, who did the best in, in, in which subject. And I've also looked at um, you know who, who did better across. So I compared each subject. And that gets us the three marks. It's one mark for each of those things. Okay. So if you're not sure about this, then you can go back and you can look at the video again. You can rewind and uh, check that you know how to draw a jeweled bar chart, so a bar chart with bars next to each other.